Cheering crowds have welcomed Iran's negotiating team back to Tehran after an interim agreement with six world powers to curb the country's nuclear program. The Iranian foreign minister's car was mobbed en route from the airport following the agreement, which eased the sanctions imposed on the country. Indeed, according to the French foreign minister, some of those trading restrictions could be lifted within a month. And a furious Israel is sending its national security advisor for urgent talks with the US before the final deal is signed. Well, the backdrop to all of those negotiations about Iran is the conflict in Syria, fast spreading beyond its borders. Now, with peace talks of its own scheduled to take place in Geneva on the 2nd of January. For now, though, there is little sign of peace, to say the least. Syrian government forces are pushing into key areas around Damascus, driving out rebel fighters. Fighting has continued to the northeast of the city in Ghouta, where regime loyalists clashed with rebels after they were forced out of several southern suburbs. Our international editor, Lindsay Hilson, was taken by government forces to the suburbs of Sebena and Tadamon, two areas that have recently come under army control. Her report does contain some graphic images, which some of you may find disturbing. Damascus, city of ruins. The rebels were ousted from the suburb of Sebena two weeks ago, but at what cost? A group of soldiers acted as our guides when we visited this morning. They didn't want their faces filmed, but were happy to show us the scene of their victory. The country's biggest cable plant lies idle and burnt. This was once the Syrian capital's main industrial zone. The rebels occupied it for seven months, and the military used artillery and air power to force them out. In days gone by, workers must have come to this barber's shop for a haircut and a shave. We came across a busload of men from the Al Hashimiya paper factory. Despite the odd bullet, they said they never let the rebels deter them from coming to work. They would take our food. Sometimes they let us in and sometimes not. Every day it was a different problem. They always made it difficult, asking us what's going on outside. But now everything is all right. The front line lies just beyond the old refrigerator factory. They watch their enemy in the neighboring suburbs. No one has collected the bodies lying in no man's land. They're left to rot. Maybe they're shooting at ghosts. All this area became safe now. The commander sketches a map to show me how in the last two weeks government forces have driven the rebels out of most of the southern suburbs, pushing them north and east. He walks me through Tadamon, an area that's still divided and devastated. The enemy uh, is on the other side. So your fighters are still in those apartments? Still in buildings, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so Controlling the area. Now. Some of our uh, advisors and fighters, you know, yeah. some of my men. This uh, shells is shells to are other, going overhead. To overhead to other area. It's hard to think this was a place where kids used to play, and someone even painted their favourite cartoon characters on the walls. This part of Tadamon was destroyed in fighting last November, but the front line is still just a few yards away. I'm told that there could be snipers shooting down this road just to my right. The commander has been telling me that the rebels have been flushed out of quite a few of the suburbs surrounding this place. But that just means that they're concentrated in a smaller area and the fighting is at times intense. The old apartment block is their vantage point. The rebels are probably in an almost identical one just a few yards away. The front line has moved just a couple of streets in a year. No one but soldiers live in this part of Tadaman now. How could they? Apart from one elderly couple. She didn't want her face shown, but he said he didn't care anymore. It's a strange existence, like living in a desert. There's no one to talk to and share your feelings with. If anyone died here, no one would see him. There are no people, but we are here although everyone else is scared and has run away from the terrorists. More than anything, she wanted to show me the picture of her soldier son. He was killed fighting in Tadaman. 
I feel comfortable and safe here. My mind is at ease. My son was killed here and I will stay here until I die too. Peace talks and diplomatic maneuvers are a long way from Tadamon and Sebene, where people struggle to make sense of what has happened to them. We met a family returning to Sebene after fleeing a year ago. The boys were in the back. It used to be lovely living here, the father said, and they drove off to see if anything could be salvaged of the life they once knew.